we're going to talk about continuous integration, um, but not in the cloud space. We're going to talk about it in the embedded IoT space and things that we can do. Uh, I do want to give you a little notice. I didn't write these slides, and I don't tell you that for any other reasons that I'm not responsible for the bad jokes. So let's start off with a joke. Why didn't the software developer fix their air conditioning in the summer? Because it was a hardware problem. So yeah, so we have many uh, resources for uh, continuous integration. And most of them are for more things like websites and cloud services. But we're going to show you today what you can do for embedded software that also adds the complexity of having custom software in there. So let's look at them two side by side. So over here, we have a general purpose software developer. And over here, we have an embedded software developer. Though they might argue, um, you know, you're just developing and testing on a host machine, whereas an embedded software developer right, is going to have multiple host machines that they're going to have to work on. So there might be arguments, but yeah, it's a little simpler to work as a general software developer, whereas the things that you have to consider on the embedded software side, you have to have a consistent environment across your teams. You have to purchase expensive hardware, board farms, and those aren't going to scale. Uh, testing hardware is very slow. Sometimes the hardware has issues and you have to fix it. Uh, lots of enterprise software in the flow, and then you also have to modify your tools for specific configurations. So let's look at some of the things that we can do with continuous integration. So some of the challenges that you're going to have is you're going to have merge conflicts, right? Someone's going to put in some software, and someone's going to put in some other software, and then suddenly you have a merge conflict. We're also going to have bugs, although we try to avoid them as much as we possibly can. Uh, near release chaos, right? Right before you something goes live, something goes wrong. It's kind of a law there. Um, but if you want efficient development, verifiable code health, and a safety certified flow, then we think that continuous integration is the way to go. So what that's going to do, if you use continuous integration, you're going to have lower costs, higher speed, and higher quality. And also, it's very well proven in the safety areas, such as aviation, uh, railway, automotive, and medical. So there's a lot of questions sometimes I get on continuous integration. What is it? There's a few things that kind of overlap that sometimes people get confused. So let's uh, go over this slide and show you some of the things that we can help avoid confusion. Continuous integration is when you have several developers integrating code into a shared repository. The software is changing often, and you auto-verify the software. So this is how you get that rapid feedback cycle, right? You're constantly going in there, checking things out, and making sure that you're doing that. With continuous delivery, it's, it's where the software is actually packaged and deployed in a production environment. So this would be pre-production. That would be in the post-production. Then you'd also have continuous deployment. And that's where their architecture is automatically deployed as soon as they're ready to go. So that's sort of like an automated version of continuous delivery. Oops, I hit the red button. Sorry about that. So we're going to stop, start at the high point and go move on down. So if you look at the high, high side, you have your code, you build it, you test it, you package it, and you deploy it. Moving one down level, you're going to have your code, which you then do your unit builds, you do your unit tests, then you do your integration build, followed by your integration tests. Finally, you build up your whole system, right? System build, system tests. If we're all good on all those, then we move on to production build, then production user tests. Everything works there. You can finally go into deployment. But then there's the implementation, right? You've got to go one more step down. So let's do that. So here's where we have like our testing branch, our production branch. You have your uh, application, and then all the different devices you have to deploy on. And this is where things can get a little more tricky. When we go to implementation. And this is where it gets more specific, where depending on what you're using for your code revision, you could have GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, CodeCommit, how you're doing your CI. We have Jenkins, Bamboo, CircleCI. Compilers, you can change all those. What kind of virtual machines, if you are using it any. What type of tests you're using, Google Test, Unity. So as you can see, this gets more and more complicated as you go on. But I do want to show some of the tools that uh, are out there to help you get through this. 
First off, we have ARM Development Studio, which is a great debugger that you can use. Use that for your embedded C and C++. Has everything for all the microcontrollers, including an Eclipse IDE debugger. For automation, uh, one suggestion would be Jenkins. It's going to automate all the non-human part of the software development. That's a good one. And then for code version, uh, there's GitHub. I'm sure pretty much everyone here is familiar with GitHub, how to take a bunch of releases and combine them into one. For its compilers, uh, we can recommend the ARM Compiler 6. Again, we also have libraries that go with that. Uh, there's also safety libraries uh, that are available. If you need to have a safe, a safe library, there are safe libraries available. Um, for your prototypes, I don't know if you're familiar with that, that's a software implementation of hardware. So before hardware is available, you can run software on a software version of the hardware. So you don't have to wait for your hardware uh, targets to be available. And then for containers, uh, we have Docker. So that's sort of like how you can virtualize your whole system and run in a Docker container. So these are all tools that can help your continuous integration flow. So again, what we want is you got to be intentional. You got to think about this ahead of time. Because uh, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to optimize speed, cost, and quality. And Unfortunately, it's one of those things, everything's unique. There's not like, oh, here's your continuous integration flow. Everyone's going to have their own flow for your own specific needs. So you kind of have to tailor it. We're going to show you two use cases that might be applicable um, right now. So the two use cases that we have right now, we have an industrial IoT customer. They're going to be monitoring and managing industrial machines. Uh, they're going to use a Cortex-A, embedded Linux, some Python. Uh, the other company is Company M. They're going to do a home IoT system. They're going to do some smart light device to match the room color to people's moods. They're going to use a Cortex M, bare metal C. So, two probably pretty common cases here. And the good news is, continue integration can cover both of these. So, whereas Company A, again, you're doing more of a high level flow. You're using like Python code with a Cortex A. And so, as you see, your code base is all .pies. You can handle that, whereas with the home IoT company, Company M, you're going to be using more of a bare metal flow. And so instead of Pi code, you're going to have a lot of .Cs. But again, both of these can be managed as part of a continuous integration flow. So what changes a little bit is just kind of the terminology. You're still going to have unit tests going to system tests. But with Company A, we're going to be using Docker containers. And then uh, our system tests are going to be done on a Raspberry Pi board. Company M, we're going to have virtual platforms that are going to be run on a Musca B. So the nice thing about containers is it's going to simplify your testing environment, right? With a container, you know what you're going to have no matter where it's running. Um, and then with this, uh, with Company M, we're going to use models to cut down on the need for racks and racks of hardware boards, right? So if you're familiar with uh, Jenkins, this is just a view of Jenkins. You're just running all your tests at once. There's the GUI over there showing what tests are passing, what tests are failing. Um, and then you have your GitHub on the left, how you manage all of those uh, views. And then um, here's how you do continuous delivery. Uh, we have the, the Jenkins pipeline feeding into the Docker image. And this is going to go to an AWS EC in, ECS instance. And then uh, with Company M, we're still going to use the Jenkins pipeline with the app binary in the cloud storage with the AWS. So this is where the delivery will be a Docker image, whereas with Company M, your delivery is actually going to be an application binary. But again, both of these are, are doable with that system. And here's just an example of a pipeline, how you start, you do your builds, and then you do your tests. And you can test under your bare metal, or you can test into your Linux. So I know we're stressing this foil. I think this is the third time we showed this. But it is important to understand that what we're trying to do here is optimize cost, speed, and quality. Uh, having a lot of boards sitting around can be very expensive and uh, not really uh, useful. We do have a lot of fast models available for everything all the way up until the A77. So there's a lot of things out there to uh, be put into this flow. And it's very flexible, right? As your boards come online, you could replace some of your fast models with boards 
although we do know the costs uh, that that can add. Any questions? Because this is what we have for uh, anything, any questions you want to ask about um, GitHub. We have source, co source code on our GitHub. We have access to fast models. If you don't have fast models, we can get you 30-day trial models. Get going with those. Uh, we have ARM Development Studio also with 30-day trials. We have links to Jenkins, links to Docker. That's what we have so you can reproduce any of these examples you'd like. Also with continuing integration, uh, we have a case study using the HP LaserJet firmware with some Git branching strategies. So if any of you think that would be helpful, give that a check out. Uh, we also have some blogs implementing com uh, embedded continuous integration with Jenkins and Docker, and also uh, part ones and part two. And with that. Thank you.